In this demonstration, we're going to use this REST service that returns a list of um, songs. As you can see here, we can provide a pattern parameter, and then we're getting songs that contain this pattern in them. You can further filter by adding another comma dot, a comma a equal and a some word. For example, if we put in sheriff, we get something that includes both words in it. Okay, and you can modify, of course, the values here and get different songs. So now we're going to use this inside a Visual Builder application and um, to create a filterable list coming from this REST service. So let's copy the source and create a new REST service connection here and we'll define the connection using the endpoints. So endpoints returns many records and then we'll give it a meaningful name and we can then define a request parameter. So we're going to use a URL parameter in this case and we're going to define a dynamic query parameter, like that. The name of the parameter, as we saw up here, is pattern. So this is what comes after the question mark here. So we'll use pattern. Uh, you can fill in default value if you want to have one. And then you can go and test it. So let's provide some value here, for example, LED. And then when we click send, we get songs that relate in this case to Led Zeppelin, for example. Alright, so we created the connection to the REST service, now let's go over and create a web application that will allow us to activate this REST service and do filtering on the records that are returned from it. Or actually, filtering that will return filtered records. So, we create a new web page, we're going to drop two input text boxes here. The first one, we'll call it the artist. That's the first filter parameter, and then we'll have another input text and um, we'll call this one a uh, filter, and this is the refining filter. Now for each one of those, we're going to bind them to a little variable, so we're creating a variable directly from here. One will be called the artist, and for the other one, we'll go over and again create the variable. This one, we'll call it filter. Now that we have those in place, we can bring in a table to get us um, the list of songs. Let's pick up a table, drop it on the page, and use the wizard to connect it to the data coming from our REST endpoint. We'll choose the fields we want to show, so the name of the artist, and the name of the song, and maybe a couple of other fields over here. And we'll use the ID as the primary key for each row. Now you can see over here that we have a place to specify the URI parameters, including the value for the pattern. We're going to leave it empty for now, and click Finish. So because we left it empty, we're not going to get any songs back, so the table is empty, and that's good. Next what we're going to do is we're going to define an event on the first field, so when we change the value of this field, we're going to execute, again, the fetch for the table. So to do that, we're going to use an assign variable action and modify the service data provider that populates our um, table. Okay, so the table is connected to this service data provider over here. And if you expand it, you'll see the filter criterion, which is how you would do it on business objects or ADF, business component based REST services. In our case, because we have a random REST service, we are going to use the URI parameter, and we're going to get the artist value to be um, inside the URI parameter. However, the URI parameter actually expects an object and not a value, and the objects will contain entries for each one of the parameters, the query parameters that we have. So we have one called pattern, and this is this one again. Okay, so we're defining a value for pattern, and over here you can have like a fixed code if you want to, some fixed text. Or in our case, we're just going to pick up this variable and put it here. So make sure this is uh, marked as an expression and this is the value that we're passing to the pattern parameter for this REST endpoint. So now let's test our application. We go into live mode and we put in a value inside the artist and we get songs that relate to that value. Put in another value, like Madonna in this case, and get songs that have Madonna either as the artist or in the name, in the title. 
So this is the initial filtering, and now we want to do maybe additional filtering. So let's add another event on the second filter. Okay. And we're again going to use the assign variable, and again we're going to modify the URL parameters. We still have one parameter that we're passing, which is the pattern, okay? But this time we're going to use two variables in here, okay? The artist and the filter. So again, we're defining an object, we're defining the value for the pattern parameter, and in this case we're going to use the artist, and then we're going to add the comma a equal, okay, as a string, and then the second value from the filter. Alright, so now if we go and test our page, we should be able to switch into live mode, filter initially by LED, and then by another word. For example, if we use a stairway, okay, we only get the stairway to heaven type of songs. Okay. Um, of course, if we change this to Bob, we'll get Bob-related songs, and then if we do the secondary filter, and put in, for example, uh, love, we get Bob songs that relate to love, or if we put in um, something like redemption, we'll get redemption song from Bob Marley. So that's basically how things work here. Okay, now if you run this, and as you build the application, you might want to debug what you're doing on, if you do invoke the developer tools, you will be able to see in the network the actual REST service calls that you're doing. So initially when you call the table, it comes up empty, it does a REST call and brings in empty set of records. Uh, so you might want to not show the table until you actually have a value in the artist. And uh, this is something you can do with a bind if. And then if we fill in a Beatles value in the artist and we look at the network, we'll see the query being executed with the pattern beaters, and then if we further filter by using guitar, we'll see our second call that goes over to the server and get us the right records. That's it.